Hi, this is a quick video to show you how to set up your development environment quickly uh, for the Configures Data UI for front-end development. So immediately I'm starting off in the Kept Backstage Plugins repository. And if we scroll below, we can see that there's a README, just like many repositories have. And part of the README is we have a quick start section that lists out the prerequisites. Is uh, we'll need to have Node.js installed. Uh, so either the active LTS release or the release prior uh, will be fine. We'll need to have Yarn installed, uh, as well as Git in order to be able to clone repository and contrib contribute back. And then we'll also need a Kubernetes cluster with Porch installed, which I do have a script uh, that can create one for you if you don't have one already. So I'll be coming back to this momentarily. Um, so, um, good reason that we need Node.js is this is actually with the backstage. There is a mini backend with the UI uh, before it talks to the Kubernetes cluster, and this is um, with the uh, backends developed in uh, Node.js. Uh, moving on is just like any other open source repository, is uh, you would fork uh, this repository into your own user. Uh, after that, you would clone it. In order to install any dependencies, you would use yarn install. And in order to run the UI, it's yarn dev. Um, and I'll need to clarify this slightly in the instructions is before you start up the UIs, you'll need to make sure that your kube config or your kube control is pointing to uh, your Kubernetes cluster with uh, ports installed. Um, now, how do you get this cluster? Is you could either use an existing cluster uh, that you have within um, one of the clouds. It could be Google Cloud, Azure, Amazon, um, doesn't matter. As long as you have a cluster, your kube configs point to it, and it has a porch on it. Um, that or another option is if we come to the top, we can take a look at this quickly. There's a hack folder that contains a number of helpful scripts. Is we can also create a cluster using kind. And if you're not familiar with Kind, is uh, Kind's a tool that you can use to create uh, local Kubernetes clusters within or using Docker, uh, which is excellent for doing quick local development. Um, likewise, um, so whenever you use this script, it's going to automatically create a uh, Kind cluster with a porch installed, as well as a couple sample uh, package repositories already installed. Um, so whenever you run the script, it actually executes these below two scripts as well. If for whatever reason you want to use a, uh, if you really have a Kubernetes cluster within Google or one of the other uh, cloud providers that you want to use, if you need to install Porch or update Porch to the latest release, you can use this install Porch script. And if you want to install some sample repositories, which we'll be seeing momentarily as well, uh, you can use this install package repository script. Uh, important to note that these scripts, um, all the scripts definitely require kube control uh, for you know, connecting, communicating with your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, JQ is required. It's a JSON uh, query library, a parser for the command line. Uh, it's used with the install port script uh, just so we can parse out the latest port release from Git. And if you want to create a uh, kind cluster, you absolutely need to have kind installed. So the, as you can see, this link's all here. So let's jump over to my development environment. So here we can see that I already have the kept backstage plugins um, cloned to my local system. So following in the instructions is I'll do your uninstall. Now I have ran this already, so it completes very quickly. Uh, if this was the first time I'm running it, it would take anywhere from 30 to, sec uh, 30 to 60 seconds to complete. Uh, one important note, too, is some of the dependencies do require, um, this is for Backstage in particular, some of the dependencies do, uh, do require uh, Python to be installed uh, to compile correctly. Um, so you'll need to make sure that you have uh, Python um, 2 installed, not Python 3 uh, for this. Or at least you'll need to ensure that whenever you execute Python, it actually executes successfully, as we can see here. Uh, anyways, jumping back is we're going to clear this out. I already did the URL install. Uh, next is I'm going to go into this hack folder, and we're going to run the script to create the kind cluster, just so we can see what that looks like. And this is going to take uh, probably 20 to 30 seconds to complete. So let's open up the README again. 
We're, actually, I've already talked about these BOM2 scripts. Is again, you don't need to create the kind cluster unless you need a cluster. Um, so you can install ports on any cluster that your cube control is uh, targeting, as well as the sample package repositories, uh, which just gives you a quick way of seeing um, how the UI works without having to do additional setup after you have the UI installed. So it looks like the script's just completing its final steps. Okay, the script's complete. Uh, so we're going to jump back to the main folder of the repository and we're going to run Yarn Dev. Okay, so you can see that automatically brings up the UI. Okay, excellent. So we have the configures data UI brought up. Uh, so it's looking good. And if we scroll to the bottom is we can see that there's external blueprints and we can see immediately that we have three different repositories registered. We have uh, kept samples, which is some of the um, kept packages that the Google team put together um, that can help demonstrate the UI. And then if we jump back uh, to the main page, the landing page, is we can also see we have two Nephia repositories imported, uh, including the free uh, 5GC packages. So if we click on this, is again, we can see the packages within this repository. And if we want to get a little bit further, is let's open up the operator. And we can see immediately all the resources within this package. And by clicking on one of these resources, is we can see the resource viewer. So we get a little bit more information about the um, the deployment here for the controller as well as um, what's in the various as well as it has two containers what images uh, that the containers are using and the commands that they're executing we of course have the yaml view too um, so so not too many surprises here uh, now we can jump back to the main page and one thing I would recommend is if you go into settings, I do this all the time for the local development. Uh, by default, uh, the sidebar right here is set to pin. It does take up a decent amount of real estate. If you unpin it, you can see that it collapses and it expands again once you go over. So something I recommend. Um, other good bit of information to know is that Backstage does um, support various themes, or namely to the light and dark theme. Um, so this can be sometimes useful in testing if you're um, creating a UI that's not using the default controls. So we're gonna jump back to the main page. Um, so this actually completes it for what I wanted to show you within this video. I'll be creating a couple more videos talking about um, pretty much the structure of the code, how it lines up with the UI that you see here, as well as how the configuration works within Backstage. And that's it, thank you.